Hi, welcome to another tutorial about Linux Mint 18.1 Mate this time. So we are on Mate actually, and I've done already some uh, fine tweaking. Let's take a look. We're already on the latest kernel <coughs> and the standard ZSH. The Mate desktop environment with Compass Choice. This is Compass. And the arc dark, simple, just arc dark. The blue standard arc dark. And there we are. So let's go ahead and do a virtual box. Now, virtual box is not yet installed. So on the GitHub of uh, Eric Dubois, there are several, uh, as you can see, several GitHubs. And we just want the one for the mate. And in here, you will find an. Uh, script and we just open in terminal and start typing and on the v for virtualbox and there we are, are at first version 2 already so i've made a change and then it receives a higher number so i know which script is the last one so i can copy paste to other gits and virtualbox is being installed in the meantime you can take a look around. So these are the study icons with a special kind of plank, transparent plank. So the purple behind it is visible, a bit glassy kind of look. And we have icons, just icon, one icon that's misbehaving that shouldn't look like that, but never mind. It looks all right in, um, well, in other distros. So it's a kind of special thing. Maybe it will be better next time I boot up. It tends to do that. VirtualBox has been installed. Let's look for it. VirtualBox, not yet active, not yet in the menu. Let's see if we can have it here. Um, VirtualBox, yeah. It's called, wait a moment. Okay, it seemed to take some time. So VirtualBox is now found and we can start it as well as you can see so um, if it's found in a terminal i would guess you will find it here but not no such luck yet so you probably need to reboot i'm gonna put an ampersand behind it so let's run and then i can close i should be able to close the terminal not in this case virtual box All right, well, here it is. This is my virtual box, and we gonna install Linux Mint on it. So no, it's not gonna be Windows. It's gonna be Ubuntu 64. In in essence, in essence, yes, that's correct. And um, you can also say it's gonna be a 64-bit, and it's gonna be Linux Mint 18.1 Mint like so next i have eight gigabits and megabytes eight thousand megabytes so eight gigs i'm gonna give half to the system i want to create a first hard disk like so dynamic allocated i'm gonna give a bit more around 20 is what i give always create mostly enough right mouse click settings can change the name if you don't like it and then we're off to the base memory has been set the processor I have eight CPUs well why not give four to the other one and for the rest I keep everything as it is supposed to be okay next up is I need to have this ISO Linux Mint ISO so we're gonna Google Linux Mint 18.1. I want made and I want to download. And then you get a link. Let's have a look what this is. This is exactly the link I wanted. So now you take a server that's nearby, not too far away. And take the one from Germany 
and see how fast that goes. 1 minute 23. We could take this one and see if that's any faster. My guess the other one is going to win. And let's pause the movie here. Okay, the installation of the download has been as uh, finished here, and you can see that it's in here. Oops, uh, in here. Let's take a look where it is. And we don't want this one, the 32 bits. I've downloaded that one for a small netbook. Let's see if it works on a small netbook. So this one is Linux Mint 18.1, made 64 bit. Great, that's what I want, let it be there, just don't mind the thing. And then we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. So we have a uh, necessity to put an optical drive in our inside, so we need to boot from something. And we're gonna boot from an image, uh, choose disk image. It's in Eric, in the download folder, there it is, and open it. So now this machine thinks there is a CD in its drive and we're going to put from this CD and do our stuff there. It wants to boot. Don't show this. Okay. And then there we go. No, don't want this message anymore. And we're booting in the system. Some of the distros end up in the terminal. I've made a series about Arch Linux on ericdubois.pe. And then you're stuck with a black screen. And then you have to type your commands. So in this case, it's a graphical way of installation and it's quite simple. Choose your language. Don't do this. No necessity to do it if you're using VLC. Everything will work out of the box. You can always install it later. And then you want to raise everything. We're on a virtual machine, so what do we care? Go ahead, my friend. He knows where I am, we're in Belgium, and we have a Belgian keyboard, Acerti, which is also always an issue for us. If we install distros, we have to change straight away from QWERTY to Acerti. Always a challenge in a terminal to figure out. And once you know, it's no challenge at all. All right, we're going to copy the files. So Linux Mint is already, the mate is already loaded. So this is a potential, one of the uh, menus. You can have two other menus in Linux Mint. And um, the things you're gonna need are probably control center. Something goes wrong with your sound or your display. The terminal to pop in some commands, display here, terminal as well and the normal programs you're gonna use. Let's pause the movie here and continue. And when we get this message, then you know it's finished. So restart now. Depending, we'll, we'll just see what it does. So the ISO, you know the image, is still inside. Let's see what VirtualBox will do. If it's going to boot with the CD-ROM again, the ISO, then, then we're in trouble. If not, we're just fine. Let's wait. Well, it does seem to forget that there is an ISO inside it, so it's going to boot from the hard disk rather than from the image. If you don't want to see this anymore, show this dialog at startup. And now we're gonna figure out, can we make this uh, a little bit bigger? So view, scale factor, nope, virtual screen, yes. My screen has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. 
I'm gonna ask him to try and do a full screen mode. Remember, right control F, don't show the message, switch. Doesn't do it, it doesn't want to do it, but never give up. Just uh, try again. It is sometimes, voila, that's uh, more or less, yep, that is what I want. Like I told you, don't give up. At some point he understands, oh, I have some more space. So now we are working on Linux Mint 18.1 Mate. We have installed VirtualBox and installed Mate on Mate. All right. First off, this message here, we can, we have to decide. Well, you can keep it like this or you can always update everything. Uh, I don't care. It's not that big of a difference. Um, I think uh, probably there is a difference, otherwise there wouldn't be a choice. But I've done both of on both of my systems and never had any issue. But that's me. Maybe it was in luck. All right. So do you want to switch to a local mirror? You can do that. So we should do that. We can do that. We don't have to do that. But I can show you how to do it. So it's going to go over all the servers in the neighborhood. And it's going to figure out which is the fastest. And there's another one, this one. That's for the Ubuntu. And this is for the Linux Mint packages. So I'm going to take this one from Holland, which is nearby. And then the one from Belgium is the fastest here. As you can see, I can already apply. Update cache. Meaning now I am hooked to these two servers. And if there is a new update, I'll get them from there. You can go unstable as well, so you get the latest cinnamon. Um, I'm not going to do that at this time. Well, it's not cinnamon we're working now, but it's uh, uh, mate, of course. So, here will be the PPAs if we're going to install them. And additional repositories like Spotify and things like that. And let's go ahead and install the updates because that's the first thing you have to do. Install the updates. Secondly, I would suggest you install kernel. Kernel is quite heavy, quite, well, you have to wait and see if everything works on your engine. For me, there will be no surprise since I've already tested it. I know it's gonna work, but I can't tell that for every piece of hardware in the world. So before you do a whole, whole lot of work and Dropbox and, and settings and your documents and your movies and all that, First, check out if the kernel, the latest kernel, then is uh, okay with your hardware. If it will it run with your hardware? Secondly, maybe you would think about drivers, graphical drivers, then in particular. Do you have an NVIDIA? Do you want an NVIDIA driver? Do you do you do not need an NVIDIA driver? You can maybe run the same system with the same performance or no better performance with a Nouveau driver, so the simple Linux driver, not coming from NVIDIA.com. Maybe that's what you want, maybe don't. you don't want it. So it's, it's a choice, a lot of choices you have to make. A new kernel, no new kernel. Do I need the NVIDIA or the ATI or the Intel driver, or I'm gonna stick with the standard driver? Those are things you have to decide. He's installing VirtualBox, guess the DKMS, that's good. That's for my VirtualBox. We're actually in, this is VirtualBox. While he's doing that, maybe we can um, take a look around as well. We can already go to the control center and we can see we have a lot of icons here. So appearance is one of the interesting icons. I want you to take you there. Customize. As you can see, we have a mint white dark here as well. You know by now if you see my tutorials that I like to go all dark. And in icons, we still don't have any icons, but I'm gonna choose a yellow one. As you can see, the mint theme will stay green, and that's a bit disappointing, but there are things we can do to change that. All right, let's close it. 
already almost there because these will be the last things he's going to uh, yeah he's going to make you the kernel here the boots image kernel stuff thing thingy 4.4 is the number he's going to do and you can install another one but I'm gonna tell him ignore the updates for this package since I will have a latest kernel 4.9.8 in a few seconds okay next up we can go to the file manager which is Kaja 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 I don't know this one okay and um, that's the file manager for mate it's uh, Nemo for cinnamon and Nautilus for GNOME and so on to nor XFC so a file manager basically okay now I'm gonna make just for good order a data folder and inside the data folder I'm gonna ask him to open a terminal I don't like my terminal straight away so I'm gonna do profiles edit use the system fonts I'm gonna make it bigger so you can read what I'm doing 16 will be big enough don't want that let's make it transparent guys always nice scrolling uh, unlimited please no scroll bar I will scroll with my mouse like so like so like so right mouse click open in terminal much nicer so we are in the terminal and then we're gonna make we're gonna install first because gi git ah, git is installed that's right on linux mint git is already installed so you don't need to sudo apt install uh, git so we can just do git clone https dash uh, dash dash github.com eric dubois and then linux mint 18.1 mate i think let's take a look no wrong guys give me a moment okay the address is open on the other monitor so it should be eric dubois and then the ultimate linux means 18.1 mate that's the address on the net and there we go let's go ahead with well it's an ls so we have downloaded if you want to see it graphical we've downloaded a folder and the folder is now there we're gonna go inside the folder see the ultimate and we are inside the folder and a lot of scripts are in there the ones you're gonna need is one two three and four and that's it but before we spend a lot of time on work inside it we first want to know can we update to the latest kernel so update to what kernel do you want there are lots of kernels the latest is eight and let's go ahead and as you can see it will download here three packages three dev files it asks my password and it will take its time to install everything and when everything is installed these dev files will disappear magically let's just do a control f here and pause and wait for the kernel to install okay we can continue our tutorial as you can see the kernel is installed files have been deleted that's the last lines and here you can see the image that is going to be in our boot directory so all we have to do is now reboot we can type sudo reboot and it's the same as the buttons to the left to restart and we keep our fingers crossed it's always the same with kernels depending yeah on the your hardware you are in for some trouble or everything will work just fine 
So this is, I don't know, let's have a look. Right mouse click, open in terminal, uname minus a. This is, well, actually 4.98. So that's okay. We can continue our quest to make a beautiful desktop based on Linux Mint Mate. We have this GitHub we downloaded, ultimate Linux Mint 18.1 Mate. All we did was this. Okay, we ran that one. Don't need to run, run all these kernels. One kernel is just enough. Remember, we do have already 4.4. .4. So, what's next? Well, some of you, and I'm not gonna do it this time because it's a black box thingy, meaning, um, where is it here? Quick install version five. Let's display it. Let's display it, let's display it. Preferences, pum, 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 pum. Line numbers, that's okay. You can give me line numbers, editor. Tap font and colors. I want a bigger font. Take 16 and light. Now you can probably read it, read it. Mostly I take this one. Solarize dark. So what it does is tell do an update, do an upgrade, but we've done that. And then install the one, install the two, install the three. There's no four yet. I have to add that. And it solves my, my printer. So you don't have the printer. Why install it? And then ZSH is an alternative to bash and is going to install and clean and everything and afterwards if all these programs have been installed you will see that there are five icons that will not follow your icon theme so whatever um, theme you take icon theme you take these icons will never change and this will fix it and this is for you to tell you guys if you take ZSH you still have to do something manually you have to tell them who you are what's your username I can't know that sudo change shell username minus s and then bin ZSH but like I said uh, let's do it step by step because number four is not inside but there's only one line in number four that's a distro specific software so let's let's go over it it's going to install stuff from the normal repository, repository, so the Ubuntu, the Linux Mint of repositories. It's gonna install everything, and here are the zippers and unwrappers and all that, so the compression uh, programs. So, not so much to install. And uh, let's go ahead and double click it. You can double click it, but then. When it's finished, it's, it pops away, so you don't see it anymore. It's too fast, it closes too fast. So, better idea just to open the terminal here, press dot slash one, and then tap, and go for it. Follow it, analyze it, what does it do? It's going to belnet.be, as you can see, we've uh, changed our servers to Belgian uh, server. So these are stuff that are coming from Ubuntu, so people who are new, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu Xenial. You can Google it and see what version it is, what was it, when was it launched, and all that. And on top of it, they have this Linux Mint. So any problem you have, you can always go to the Ubuntu forums and check out if there, somebody has found a solution for your problem. Because Ubuntu and Linux Mint, well, they are even more than, than brothers and sisters. So they are really connected to each other and uh, you can get your uh, insights there you can move these over there and in mates we can't it seems we can't have a one fourth of a window I'll look for it if it's possible to have it in mate but here it's a half here and a half there or a half, no, uh, a hole there, and um, that's how it is. Minimize, maximize, move, resize. That's what we can do. And the core software has been installed. Thank you very much. So we can go ahead with number two, the extra software. It's going to install the 
atom program. So this one, if we display it, it's going to install quite some lines here. So all it does is start another script, start another script, start another script, which makes it for me easy to uh, to follow and to, to, to maintain. Meaning I link to a shell, to a script, one of these scripts, or I don't. And I could put a hashtag in front of it. And when I put a hashtag in front of it, it will not be installed next time around. So it's just a question of tastes. What do you need on your engine to work and what software will you use and just omit the things you don't want. Or if it, I don't install it, just double click it, run it or have to run it in a terminal. It will work both ways. And every uh, script is, is, well, all kind of stuff to install and it will do it automatically and, and I tend to use, I tend to try to keep your computer clean so remove everything that you've downloaded. Not necessary really because when you reboot then the temporary directory will be cleaned anyway but I am that uh, meticulous that I want to clean everything out. G Radio is being installed, G Radio is a little program I discovered. Well, we really need to wait, like in VirtualBox, not even now, VirtualBox is not yet in the menu, so we really need to wait for the menu to load. I'm gonna see reload plugins. Can we do this? VirtualBox, virtual, nope, G Radio. I guess we really need to to wait for it to appear but then again I have virtual boxes on the other engine of course not on virtual box damn Eric so brackets is here so yeah yeah the menu is, is, is working no problem everything fine I wanted to do is go to the preferences while we wait and we have here the menu and let's convey to the people on there on, uh, on the world when you make a screenshot look guys we're on Linux Mint 18.1 mate. Most in, most of the time, it's interesting to put some spaces behind it and makes it a bit nicer. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to get a nicer icon here later, but I first need to download some icons. So I'm not there yet. So this already changed. Did I add option other options? Yes, there were other options. Always start with favorites pane. So this is favorites. Do you want to start like this? Yeah, okay, fine, I'll do that. So this now is now the favorite, so the 80% of the time programs you're gonna use, eh? those programs will be put here. You can delete the things you don't want, remove from favorites, I'm gonna remove quite a bit. I'm not using any of those. So why should I be in here? Move this one over there. Come on. Okay. Now this one back to there. Okay. Display. Once it's done, it's done. Remove from favorites. System monitor. Yeah. Why not? Theme. I'm gonna follow the desktop theme. Applications. Show applications comments. No comments anymore. Show application comments was that again it's not this that's the hopper that's range hover is still applicable hover delay icon size search for packages to install all right favorites number of columns two or one let's see if that reacts straight away and that's changed okay two is nice something different then huh? scroll you can toggle the default places the default places are here you don't want to see parts of them or you want to see other parts system toggle the default items so these items are 
these items. Don't want to see them. Want to have a bigger icon. Like so. So the menu is quite uh, versatile. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Okay, in the meantime, it is finished. Let's go for number three. And this will be the fun. What I mean, what do I mean with fun? Well, we want to change our desktop from time to time. A wallpaper, an icon, maybe a con key. So these things will be installed now. These are the Sadi icons and the Surfing icons. And they will be, uh, well, changing the look of our desktop. And there are many icon themes out there, so um, do check them out and install them and see what you like. It's all quite personal how a desktop should look like, of what a desktop should, be, should look like. These are the surfing icons. What's this? It seems to me arc team. So the arc team is an. Uh, from the Horst 3180 and this is the Flat Tablus theme which is also based on Arc but with some nicer or well different kind of icons at the right top some colors that's going to be installed as well from time to time we need to switch this is as simple as that uh, you can have great themes and then but once you we're looking on it for a month you really want to change to another theme and with all these scripts we can we have a mint white theme and we have uh, our colora themes you can check out github for that so we can change the arc theme from horse from color but also the mint Y theme which is basically also from horse so with a little script you can change to 16 million colors choose a color run the color and those are the scripts and then you have another and let's do this one as well run in terminal this time or not then you see what I mean it just installs and then poof, it's gone and you really don't know was it installed now did I get an error or not so we have installed these four that's it all the rest is possible as well um, Watch out maybe for this one, I've, in, I've added it. But what does this one do? It an, un deletes all the older kernels. So it keeps one kernel, just one kernel. So the 4.9.8. So if you run this one, you really should know that your kernel is stable, the one you're having. So that's that. Um, well, there are other stuff like this cool retro term. Uh, let's quickly install it so you know. It's top, double click and then Eric, login of Eric, and then we have another program. So let's let's just not wait for him to do that. Let's do uh, do a change. Uh, what changes can we do? We can go to variety, and uh, we need definitely need a new wallpaper. No thanks. Change the wallpaper on start. We know the standard wallpapers already. Uh, desktop is the one we want. Bing, we don't want Bing. Flickr, we don't want Flickr. And then, what's next? We should probably do, voila, like that, like so, 80%. And let's hope that we have some images, but as you can see, no more wallpapers. I've made my selection so rigid that it has no more wallpapers to to serve me so i have my own wallpapers only thing i need is dropbox so i'm gonna install dropbox and i'm gonna install it and tell it to uh, download not the complete uh, dropbox so the gigabytes uh, just one folder containing the wallpapers so you can actually actually do that but Sorry, but I am uh, going to keep this one for a secret. So I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna wait, I pause and come back to you. Okay, everything has been set. So Dropbox is now here and it's going to download everything. 
430 files, that's not so much, but in the meantime we'll have uh, a beautiful wallpaper. But as you see, when we scroll over the icon, it's not yet okay. All right, let's make our desktop beautiful. We're waiting for the wallpapers, that's set. Variety will take care of that. And now let's go to the control center, or we could go to appearance, like so. Right mouse click, add to desktop, add to panel. Panel would be nicer, add to panel. Now it's here, we can move it around, move, and can put it somewhere else where you rather want it to be. There's something in between here, lock. I'm gonna delete this, remove from panel. What's this? That's better. So right mouse click, and then you can do the properties of the panel, or you can delete stuff like so. I don't know if I can show you guys. Uh, deleting, lock to panel, changing panel, that's all what right mouse click. Okay, we have the program. Mm -hmm. Appearance. Well, it's a little bit different than in Cinnamon, um, but we can here select here a background as well. It's going to take time to load everything. So we have to wait. I've clicked on the tab. Um, so I have to, I'm forced to wait for it to load. Okay, now we're in fonts already. So backgrounds are there. Let's change the background. Would be nice in the meantime. Fonts. Well, we can change the fonts in size. Basically, I love the Noto Sans and Noto Sans font, and this is actually the Nata Sans regular font, just not uh, italic or bold or so regular. And this one we can make even bigger because it's gonna be our title, and that's okay. So um, that's fine with me. Fonts, background, themes. Back to the themes. The current theme suggests a font. Hmm. Apply font. Let's see what happens. The last applied font suggestion can be reverted. Okay, revert font. Um, something small happened, I think. Something happened here. Let's see what happens. Uh -huh. I think he made it smaller again. And that's about it. Okay. So far, let's go and customize it. What do we have already? Ooh, whoa, wow, whoa. So we have lots of themes. Why? Because we installed number three. We can go to our dark crimson, which is gonna be a red one. You like red? This is our dark crimson. A uh, crimson. Uh, our dark red, darker red. If it's uh, too bright for you, then we have this one. And if you don't like this dark. Uh, screens that I always use. You can use a darker, a lighter version of Arc. As you can see, these are all lighter versions. So a lot of things have happened. Software has of themes and icons have been downloaded. And um, let's take, for instance, let's take something else. Let's take the Watusi. Why Watusi? So I tend to make aha uh -huh, the Dropbox has been installed here. What I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna go to the preferences. Gonna go to the variety preferences. I'm gonna tell him, look, my wallpapers are actually in the Dropbox, in the apps, in the desktopper. Okay, remember it. Okay, close. And then we go over here, and we get these awesome wallpapers. I like. So, Arc Dark Watusi, that's what we're gonna make. Why do we have a name like that? Well, because of the Sardi icons. Sardi icons are here. And I've created a lot of Sardi icons, as you can see, all Sardi icons. And at some point in time, I created a color combination, which I called then Watusi. And I made it also an art theme to go with it, so that my desktop is complete. Theme, icon, conky, and then everything is, is one whole one, one uh, unity. So, controls, dark watuzi, colors, you could change them by the way here, but I wouldn't. 
Uh, some parts will not change with it, just some of the colors will change, not all of them. And then we have the window border, don't forget the window border. So these things, this, this thing here, up here, that's the window border. So if you choose Arc Dark Watusi, you should go in here, scroll as well to Arc Dark Watusi. And this one is the one for that one. I can go with this one as well. Well, if you, if you like that kind of thing, that's great. But it was intended to look like this. Okay, icons, done that. Pointer, not done. I always like the Bree Snow or the dark one, the dark version, but dark on dark. So I rather have a white one since I have a lot of dark themes and wallpapers. Okay, everything is set. We have a system now that looks like this. Yeah. Home folder, a system that looks like this. And we're well, more or less okay. And in the other tutorial, the next one, I'll go further into detail to fine tune it even more. Okay?